Hello again and welcome to another edition of Hashtag Now Smoking. I'm Gary Korb, your host for the show. And today I'm joined by my good friend, Humberto Gonzalez. He is the famous smoke shop buyer for several brands of cigars. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not my father. Not this one, no. <laughs> and that is what we're smoking today. My father, La Promesa Petite, and La Promesa means The Promise, The, right? promise. the promise, that's promise. correct. And we'll talk about that, how they got the name for that. And Petite means small, and this is kind of small. It's a Rothschild, it's four yes. and a half by 50. It has an Ecuador Habano Rosado Oscuro well, wrapper. The, the, the double band actually makes it look smaller, but yes. it's, 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 it's kind of like a, a Robusto But size. I love the fancy bands. Yeah. I love when they do that, you know, but most of the cigar is covered. All right, so um, anyway, have you smoked the cigar? I've never smoked a cigar before. I no. haven't smoked it yet either. I okay. love my father's stuff, but I have not smoked this. As do I. Okay, so actually it was you who kind of turned me on to Pepin Garcia. I, we, how, Believe when? it or not. Many years ago when we were at IPCPR show, uh, you were raving over La Roma de Cuba. Oh, okay. Which he made. And uh, that's how I learned about him. And uh, well, I guess the rest was history because he really made, that was when I think he He's really, really started a, to make a, his a mark. Tr a tremendous name for himself yeah. over the years, yes. Yeah, he's an amazing man. All right, so anyway, so it has this nice little rose colored uh, foot band. We got to take that off. It smells really nice. It has a nice uh, leathery yeah, I'll, I'll put this on uh, smell the to next it. To the skeleton over there. Yes. Well, this 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 show is airing on Halloween Eve, so okay. I thought we'd have some skulls to uh, <laughs> sort of have some fun with that. So, hmm, now I'm going it smells kind of nice, kind of earthy. All right. So let's uh, clip this baby. It has a nice triple yeah. cap on it. Just scalp it. Don't yeah. behead it. No. I, okay. I don't do that. It, okay. It's really nicely packed. How's yours? It feels really good. Of course, we would expect nothing but the highest quality from Don Pepin, right? The people at my father. Oh, nice. Kind of getting like a kind of a toasty, bready, and like a slight little bit of salt that, that right pre -light there. Draw that, uh... It's very good too. It's like perfect. So I really like a lot of their stuff. Um, I like. I also like some of uh, Jaime Garcia's cigars too. The like the Reserva Especial. It's his son, Jaime, and um, he's got some operation down there in Esteli. Mm -hmm. They have a tremendous operation down there. Yeah. I haven't been down there in several years, but yeah, uh, I haven't. I haven't been there in a long time. Yeah. Oh, well, I get very a, nice. It's really rich up front. Yeah. Very, um, it's, it's, it's got a ni nice, it, it's actually, on, on, on the light, on the, on the first draw, I, mm -hmm. I, it's actually kind of mild, you know? It, yeah. It, 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 but but it's, it's rich in flavor. Mm -hmm. it's, not, uh, it's not overpowering at all. I'm getting um, kind of some, some of that Nicaraguan earthiness right. and, uh, again, that, that kind of bready, uh, toasty note. It's, it's almost there's, a, the, there's a sweetness to it mm -hmm. that, that, that's really, and, and the aroma is fantastic. Yeah, the yeah. Aroma's I tell you, really, this, really is really, this is really nice. It's got a little sweetness in it, too. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit about my friend Alberto here. We, I, I have known you for, I guess, as long as I've been working here. Over 20 years, since New York. Yeah, well, you were the guy I used to contact in New York when yeah. I had a question about famous smoke shop cigars or something. <laughs> and you're also responsible, partially responsible, maybe all, all wholly responsible for my working here. Um, because you I, said, hey, uh, I don't know who's going to write all this copy since we moved to Pennsylvania, and uh, why don't you, well, well, maybe I, you can talk to Arthur. At, at one point, I was writing all the copies. You were, you um, were. For, for all the catalogs, and that became just an overwhelming task because you, can only, you can't describe, you, you, can't, you can't make different descriptions for every cigar in a catalog, you know, and, I know. and, 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 and be really <laughs> creative about it. It's crazy. And I remember having that conversation with Arthur in New mm -hmm. York, um, I, I did about three or four catalogs, and then mm -hmm. I said, we just need somebody else. And you happened to be in the picture, and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I believe I had asked him to, to see you about Yes, you did. About yeah, doing and that. Uh, fortunately... It was a good decision. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's nice to say. And so we've, so we've been friends, and uh, we know it's for a long time. But we've never really done this. No. You know, I mean, we've, we've gotten together socially a couple of times yeah. over the years, but this, this is kind of cool. The Lafayette. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I still have those pictures. Yeah. But anyway, this is really, really, really nice. And um, 
I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna smoke it a little bit, get down and you know deep into the first act, and then we'll see how that turns out. All right, here we are in Act One, and I'm almost about any, I'm almost touching the second band, so I'm gonna have to take it off. I'm smoking a little slower than you here. Yeah, that's all right. I'm here with. Umberto Gonzalez. I, I enjoy my cigars. I don't just like suck my <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not smoking fast. It just it just happened to get there <laughs> a little quicker. But I just love these bands, you know. Like, yeah. And look at all the what's the money that must go into some of these bands, you know. Ash is uh, very dark and kind of light. It's kind of a mix. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this cigar. This let's is do the that. My Father La Promesa Petite. It is a four and a half by fifty Rothschild. I guess you would classify it. Um, it's a wrapper that is made in Ecuador. It is an Habano Rosado Oscuro. Uh, Rosado, usually they, when they say Rosado, it has like a reddish like a, like a, hue like a to it. Rose tint to it. And yeah. Oscuro usually means very dark, but Oscuro. it doesn't always, right? Yes. Uh, and why well, is that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> there, there, there's uh, people classify cigars in, in a particular way. There's really no standard in the industry about what an Oscuro really is. Okay. Uh, but an Oscuro. I mean, this I would classify this as a Oscuro, or at least a Maduro, which mm -hmm. which, which isn't really a color. Right. Um, it is dark. Yeah, Oscuro just basically yeah. means dark. Okay, you know. I'm gonna ash it, and I'll tell you, the ash looks pretty firm here. It's pretty nice. Um, and let's see, the binder and filler are all Nicaraguan, grown on Garcia's estate farms, and they grow some hell of a good tobacco. I'll tell you that. Um, but, but one thing I didn't visit down in, down in uh, Nicaragua when I when I went there. Really? I, I didn't see his fields. No. No, but uh, I understand it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, it says here that according to my father, La Promesa has only been available in small quantities, appearing early in 2016, and um, it was officially released at uh, IPCPR. And the, so it was um, only promised to a certain number of people. Right, okay. <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, the promise, which means, uh, you know, la promesa, refers to the promise that uh, Jose Pepin Garcia made to his family before he left uh, Cuba for Nicaragua. He says, I guess he said, I promise I'm going to do okay when I get out of here. <laughs> you know? so, but, uh, you know, I mean, I don't mean, I'm not trying to make fun. I mean, <laughs> you know, the guy, the guy knows his, his stuff. Um, and, um, Every, everybody that left Cuba had some sort of, uh, uh, prob probably had some sort of promise or some sort of legacy to leave sure. behind that they, that they had to write about or talk mm -hmm. about later on in life. And it also says here that this promise was to prove himself, to make something of himself in the scar industry outside of Cuba, to honor his family and his tobacco heritage. So mm -hmm. um, I'm really liking the cigar so far. I got a real big blast of pepper and then like, whoosh, and then I, round I, it out. I got I got about the same thing. I, I, I there, there was right after I, me, I mentioned the light was actually kind of mild and it was it was uh, it was pleasantly uh, mild and so just to mm -hmm. some extent. Uh, but then like shortly thereafter, I got that same blast of okay, well here here's, here's yeah like a here's wake a up spice, call. Here's a pepper. Here's here's okay, fine. Now it's getting right. really really interesting. Now it is. It's rounded out and it has like kind of like that sharp kind of a sharpness to it. Um, but it has sharp it earthiness to it. it but it's lost its sweetness. Yeah, there is still some sweetness in there, yeah. and um, it's, it, but it's it's very earthy to me. But there is some sweetness, like on like you know, on the tobacco itself. It's 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 just it's 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 just really nice, you know. Um, it's a very <coughs> elegant cigar. Uh, would would you would you say this? You know, we do the show in the morning. Yes. It's kind of early. Would you say this? Would you normally smoke this in the morning? Uh, or just be uh, later I, in the day. I, I don't have any preference as to what I smoke in the morning. I, I, I'll smoke just about any type of cigar in the morning. Really? Yeah. <coughs> I, I, I don't classify cigars by, by strength. I, I classify them by uh, by volume of flavor. Okay. Um, so to, to one per, one person's strong cigar is, is to me is like okay, well this is this is a, a large uh, a flavor profile, not, not mm -hmm. a strength profile. Uh, this is this is loaded, loaded with flavor. Yeah, um, it really is. It's uh, really it, nice. And by flavor, I mean like <coughs> just real rich tobacco. Yeah, flavor. it is. It's I guess you know yeah. they use the word rich a lot. Yeah. But this is rich, yeah. you know, in yeah. every sense of the word. Um, <coughs> so I, you know, I was just writing down some notes here um, that I'm getting it, it was earthy and semi-sweet so far. So. Um, 
And even, and even in the retrohale, you get that, that very, yeah. very, very Yeah, I've been kind of avoiding retrohale. Spicy lately. sweetness to it. Very okay. nice. I'm, um, I'm very impressed with this. I, I like the way the wrapper has kind of like a leathery texture to it, too. And it's, it's, uh, it's thick, it's, you know, it's kind of like it's got some, some, some weight to it. It appears know? to be a very, very thick wrapper. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very, it's, it's, it's holding together really, really nicely. Um, I, uh, I'm really appreciating the cigar. It's, it's fun. Yeah, it's and fun you know what? Fun. And I, I tell you, speaking about morning smoke, I mean, this might be a little more full-bodied, full-flavored for someone who normally has a cigar in the morning or, like, or prefers something a little lighter, but because of its length, you know, I think it you know goes great with my coffee here, mm -hmm. and um, you know it kind of gets you going. You, you, you didn't make me coffee, did you? It's like, uh, I, I was supposed to take a coffee no. this morning. No, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and anyway, you get water. enjoy your water. Well, you know, water is very good for pairing with cigar. Because I think you get palate. you get more of the flavor of the cigar. Sometimes it's not being covered up by right coffee flavor or or whiskey or whatever you pair with your cigar. Orange juice. Some people like orange juice. You know. You know who that I, is. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> no, but that's an inside thing. But um, I tell you, I, I think that he has been amazingly consistent, Pepin Garcia, through the years. Oh, well, one, one thing I'm not mentioning about this, you get mm -hmm. volumes of smoke. There's a lot of this. this yeah. This, it, it, I, I can fill, fill a small room with a lot of smoke with this one little cigar. It's actually quite nice. Mm. Well, I tell you, this first act is really wonderful. Let's see what happens in act two. All right. Watch this. That is a lot of freaking smoke, man. Yep. That is a lot of smoke. Yeah, the smoke is dense, and it's really rounded out now. And it's just nice, you know? You're retrohaling a lot. I do. I can't do it too much. I got this sinus thing going on. <laughs> and I'm afraid I don't want to have to go, uh, go back to the sinus guy. Also, uh, I forgot to mention that the La Promesa comes in a box of 20. They are available at famous-smoke.com at nice prices. The uh, list prices, I guess you could say, are, it's about, this is, this is an $8 cigar. Would you say it's worth $8? Well worth $8. Yeah, definitely, well yeah, it's worth, worth $10, it. if you ask me. And um, the, uh, we mean, also have five packs at famous-smoke.com, right? And they're about 35 ish And the box uh, is, now that's a, this is a list price, the box is, under $160, it's 156 uh, but you'll get an even better deal if you buy it at famous-smoke.com. So there's our commercial. Uh, <laughs> I, I will say that this cigar is like really a very perfect after dinner smoke. If you've had, mm -hmm. if you've had a nice steak dinner, if you've had a really good time out on, 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 on you know, painting the town red or something like that, mm -hmm. you want to sit down and relax and do something fashionable and yeah. just kind of enjoy your time with with friends and, and family and, mm -hmm. and this is really just a very sublime smoke i agree that, it's that it's very elegant yeah it's an elegant yeah. elegant cigar it's a really a great like i said after dinner yeah and i like i said i just i just really love uh pepin stuff tell us a little bit about what you do as a famous smoke shop cigar buyer who do you buy for oh my i buy for uh so many so many people i i, I buy for general cigar i right. buy for alec bradley rocky okay. patel um, Southern Draw, Crown Heads, Villiger, so wow. on and so on and so on. I, a there, there, there's a lot of people that I, that I do business mm -hmm. with. And also uh, you work with um, Amos de uh, Santiago, right? I work, uh, yeah, I, I, I moonlight with Amos de Santiago with Consuelo mm -hmm. Gomez. Um, right. I've been working with her for about four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it, it, it kind of like, it, it, it's kind of a hobby actually because I like to visit shops and I like right. to visit people and see. It keeps you in see, the retail it, 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 mode. It, it yeah. keeps, <laughs> keeps, me, keeps me social with, with, with people and mm -hmm. it keeps me loving the craft of smoking cigars and enjoying them with, with other people. And, and she's, she's a great partner. She's great to work with. Yeah, she's very, we've had her, um, we've had her on, but when we did our, our live show, yeah. she was on. Um, I'll bring her on the show one day. <laughs> maybe we will, okay. we'll do that. Um, what would you say are the um, primary flavors you're getting out of the cigar? Um, I'm, I'm still getting a lot of that earthiness, but I'm still getting some sweetness. How about you? I, you're asking the wrong guy about flavors. I, I don't really kind of, I mean, I've, I've heard people ca throw in nutmeg and yeah. chocolate and, mm -hmm. you know. I'm getting a little nutmeg in here. <laughs> pencil lead and like. Uh, yeah, I know, but we're not uh, talking about that. Pineapple juice or whatever. I, 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 I don't really get like, flavors out of it. I just get this to be like an, overwe an overall um, 
pleasant. Uh, there, there's pleasant and there's unpleasant, and mm -hmm. I can't find anything unpleasant about it. Okay, cigar. so you just look at the cigar as a yeah, whole. Yeah, yeah, You don't say, oh, well, I'm getting a little bit of earth, it, it, I'm getting a little bit of uh, sweet it, tobacco, I'm getting uh, some nutmeg and it's uh, not. It's not a strong cigar. Some, some cigars tend orange to... Orange peel. <laughs> tend, tend, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some cigars tend to be... They might have a particular leaf or something like that might affect me physically where I have like maybe like a knot in my throat or something okay. like that. This, I'm not, get, I'm not getting that out of this cigar. Um, wow. Some cigars make you hiccup for some reason. Like yeah, I, you used I, to get the hiccups a I lot, get, I, I get, remember I get, that. I get, I get hiccups sometimes <laughs> from cigars. This is not doing that for me. This is not affecting me negatively at, at all. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite fantastic. Would you say it's complex? Uh, I would say it is a complex cigar because it's got uh, um, it's got certain attributes to it that, that I can't put my finger on, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm getting a, I'm getting a little bit of spice over here, a little bit of sweet over there, a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of sour almost. That, mm -hmm. that, that's like a pleasant type of sour to it. That, that yeah, I can I can I can I can yeah, taste that, that a little bit. Yeah. That that's kind of blending together in such a very very, very favorable fashion. So so you define complexity as sort of an aggregate of flavors. Correct. It's coming out. Not that it, it changes at one point and changes again. It changes. It's the a, only change I two I, definitions. The, the of only complexity. change I got out of the cigar was from the first light to like you know a quarter inch in. Right. Where, yeah. Where, where, where I got that pepper thing. Right. But, but this has been consistent throughout. Yeah. It's it's really really good. I mean, look at the presentation is beautiful too. I mean, look how they do with the ribbon and the whole thing. I mean, this is a classy. classy Even with skulls cigars. around it. Yeah. Throughout, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you talked about having this, you know, after um, after dinner or in the or late or late in the evening for like a nightcap. What, what would you pair with this? Uh, are you a drinking guy? Uh, um, <laughs> I, 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 I would pair a, a, a good single malt with this. Oh, really? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like uh, I like the Macallan. Mm -hmm. uh, the Twelve year is nice. Um, I, I, it, I, I mean, can see it, having um, pairing it with water right now. Even that's fantastic. You know, I did a show way back where I had water and coffee, yeah. and I compared the two. You know, and it, it is very different. Well, water cleanses the palate, and you get mm -hmm. to really enjoy the cigar a little bit more. Um, as far as pairing it with any kind of alcohol, I wouldn't pair it with anything anything tropical. No. Um, I wouldn't pair it with beer. I would definitely no. go with with a um, with a top shelf uh, a top shelf whiskey. Right, or what top, about top so shelf what about rum? Yeah, I guess I can see rum with this. Hmm. Even rum, maybe not. Do you think it's too sweet? Yeah. Okay, so that would add extra sweetness. Right. And, uh, well, I think, I th I'll tell you, this is just a beauty. Who, who, would, who would you recommend this to? That's a good question. Well, I, I, who would you say, I, you know, say, I'm looking for a good cigar. Uh, I, when, when, I, when, I, when somebody comes to me and asks me what cigar should I smoke, the first thing I ask them, which is kind of, kind of get, they, I, get, I get this quizzical look on their face mm -hmm. whenever I say, I say, what do you like to eat? What's your favorite meal? Really? Um, huh. and, and they'll, they'll look at me like, well, I don't know. And they'll, they'll tell me, like, I like steak or I like sp pasta or I like you know, fish or whatever. Right. And then, then that kind of gets me, you know, gets me to understand what they like. To taste. Oh, okay. So, That's um, so with this cigar, I mean, uh, this is definitely a steak lover cigar. So, mm. if, if you if you like a good, it's meaty. A, uh, yeah, <laughs> if, if you like a good steak, this is a fantastic cigar for that. Anything, you know, anything that that that, that overwhelming with flavor, this is kind of like going to match. Yeah, up I mean, this this I mean, this is the, this has got like what, what I would call deep dark yeah. Nicaraguan flavor. I mean, if you like, and it's not overwhelming. It's not overwhelmingly strong and, 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 and powerful. It's just right there. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It's not it's not knocking me out. No. You know? But if you like Nicaraguan cigars, I mean wow, this is this is this is the this is the shit. It, this is definitely <laughs> like a very very pepin flavor profile cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he also makes the cigars for tatuaje. Correct. Right? And they have a big fan base. Correct. Well the other thing I wanted to ask you was um, when you're buying cigars, um, how picky are you? Like, you know, how do you how do you deal with some of these guys? Like, do you you you, you know, do you take do you say I'm just going to take some cigars, I want, I'm going to take this size and this size, or when you know, when we make a buying brand? when we make a buying decision as a whole here mm -hmm. at Famous, and we, we taste a cigar, we, we we look at several parameters to to determine whether it's worthy of really bringing in. And it's not, not so much that we're that, that pig-headed that we, 
we right. think we, we, we have to be like very picky. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have to make sure that a cigar is going to sell. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so one what are of the your criteria? One, one criteria absolutely is if you're a cigar maker out there and you want to sell to famous smoke shop, you need to be in, in, in a whole lot of shops. We have to, it has to be requested brand. It I has see. to be something that, that, that people are asking us about. Um, or else it's really not going to do us much good. We have 22,000 SKUs here, and, and, <laughs> and, and wow. it's hard to focus some, your attention on one thing. We're not, we can't grow a brand for anybody. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. Once, once we try a cigar and we like it, and we, the first criteria is met, then um, we'll, we'll make a buying decision at, at that point. And we typically don't buy a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll test, for me personally, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll test a couple of boxes, put them out online, maybe put them in a retail store, have right. some kind of a promotion. Um, and get some feedback from our customers. And then once we're satisfied that, it, that it's going to be an ongoing thing, mm -hmm. uh, we'll go ahead and purchase more oh, okay. to, you know, for future uh, projections. That's really interesting. Um, we don't want to be, we don't want to make, the, 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 the worst thing we can do is make a large purchase on something that's not going to sell because right. everybody gets, get, mm -hmm. gets pie in their face at that point. Right, and then it ends up in the clearance aisle. Correct, <laughs> and, and, and nobody wants that. Yeah. So, so we're 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 careful, we're careful whenever we 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 pick up a product. Oh, this is absolutely delicious. Uh, would you say it's humidor worthy? Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I would definitely want to have a couple of these around. I, you know, it, it take buy, buy a box of these and, and and take the cellophane off and put them and tuck them in your humidor. Let them sit there for a little while. Let them meld with. Yeah. With the other, Let with me the ask other. you about that. Do, are you into that? Like, do you believe that cigars do age better uh, af afterwards? I mean, at home a little bit, they, I'm, they I'm need not, to age up. I'm not going to say they age better. I think that mm -hmm. they marry better when 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 you take the, the cellophane off, mm -hmm. and they get to taste more like each other than like having any kind of variations. Yeah, because off. I take the cello off. Correct. All my cigars, pretty much. Well, I used to just cut the end off of the cello because I want to protect the wrapper, which right. I think is a really good idea. Um, you know. But um, the, I've I ended really up taking idea. them off in most cases, and I, I think you're right. I think when they're sitting there in the, uh, in the, you know, in your humidor, and all those, you know, great, especially if you have a good collection of cigars with good tobaccos, they really tend to yeah. uh, age up nice. Speaking of speaking of cell, this is actually pretty interesting. There's one manufacturer, De Crossier. De Crossier. De Crossier. Uh -huh. um, the guy's name is Santana. What's up, Santana? <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he. He patented a, a, a cello mm -hmm. uh, that actually has slots in it, so that way you can breathe. Really? Better. Yeah. That's very cool. It's actually re really, really cool. <laughs> I, 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 I was, I, I was like actually that. looking at one of his cigars just the other day, and uh, before smoking it, and I noticed it. And I'm like, wow, this is actually pretty damn cool. And I, I think it's his patent. Wow. Um, and he does it with every single cigar, so that way you don't have to take the cello off. You can actually just keep yeah. it. Yeah. And you wonder why no one thought of it sooner, right? I'm sure somebody <laughs> did, but it's like you know. But then you have like someone like Christian Iroa who, who uses that silk uh, paper uh, instead right, of cello because right. he he's he's very environmentally conscious. Correct. He likes to, he wants us you know so he wants to, he doesn't want to use you know tree you know trees any more than they have to like for the boxes so and I like that I like I like the uh, I like that wrapper that he puts on that yeah but this um, much like we do with the uh, Romeo. Uh, Oh yeah, the, the, with the Capulet. The Capulet, uh, yeah. the Capulet Montague. And the Romeos for that are made for famous smoke shop. Anyway, I'm just really loving this thing and uh, we're getting down near the end, so let's see what happens in Act 3. All right, we're getting down into nub territory here and this thing has just been fantastic. And it's been consistent, Rocking. you know? Yeah. And I'm getting mostly earth, sweet spice, a little light pepper on the finish, but it's very um, wholesome. It's kind it, of it, it, describe it, 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 you know? you're, you're, I am getting that, I mean, this is typical of any cigar, whenever you start to smoke down towards the end, you, yeah. get, you get that bitterness. Yeah. But even, even that is not being unpleasant. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of like a dark chocolate yeah. bitterness, you know, which I like. You know, you were telling us that you do, you do some resto retail store events. I do a lot of events, yeah. And um, Retail store, we, I, I do a lot of uh, golf outings and uh, mm -hmm. corporate events and stuff like that, where people don't normally... Even weddings also, where people don't normally smoke cigars. Right. You know, they just do it for, for special occasions. So when you meet these people at these events and stuff, um, <laughs> that's bothering me. Uh, how, um, how do you recommend cigars? Like when people ask you, you know, even, even when you're not working, I mean, I'm sure people talk, must talk to you about cigars, your friends and things. How do you recommend stuff? Well, if, if I'm working at a table and, and, and I have a variety of cigars that I'm working with, mm -hmm. uh, and, and 
people are interested in, 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 in smoking something, I'll ask them, what are you looking for? They said, do you have anything mild? And yeah. it's typically, like 90% of the time, they say, give me something mild. And well, you have to say mellow these days. Mellow, mi mellow. okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, 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 it's that, mellow. That, that, that's, that, that's a new terminology <laughs> because, yeah. of, because of FDA yes. ruling, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> but um, they'll, they'll, they'll tell me something like that, and uh, I'll look at them and I'll say, well, why do you want a mild cigar? And I'll kind of challenge them. I'll say, what, what, what's, what's your... What's your reasoning for asking for a mild cigar? Right. And they'll say, "Oh, well, I don't, I, I don't smoke very often. I'm just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm used, used used to smoking mild cigars. I don't really like anything too crazy." Or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, "Well, let, let me let me ask you a, a personal question." I'll say, "What do you like to eat? What's, what's your favorite meal? If you if you wanted to, if you had something that you wanted for the rest of your life every yeah. single day," and they'll tell me whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And um, wh the reason for that question is that. Um, this is this is a taste experience. Right. This is this is not a strength experience. It's, it's really a taste experience, a, a, a flavor experience, um, uh, and the best way for me to kind of get into the head of somebody who's trying to uh, try something that they want to taste for the mm -hmm. very first time is to say, well, you know, well, let me find out what your palate's all about. And, the, mm -hmm. and since the one thing that really connects us humans. <laughs> yeah. You know, the only thing that we really do, that we all do, that, that, we, that, that, that nobody really kind of skimps about is, is we eat. Mm -hmm. We like, we like, and we're, we're specific about what we like to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll ask them, what do you like to eat? What's your favorite meal? And they'll tell me, I don't know, I, I, I like steak. And I say, well, why, why are you smoking a mild cigar then? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and they'll look at me like, what? And I, and I say, well, you know, apparently you like things, you like, you like flavor in your life. Mm -hmm. You like something that, that, that's going to really satisfy um, your taste buds. Right. So, you know, let, let's, let's steer you away from, from your typical mild cigar, and I want you to try something. Okay. And I'll, and I'll point them in a different direction. I'll, so I'll, I'll give them a nice medium-bodied or, or medium, uh, yeah, medium-bodied Maduro. Mm -hmm. which they typically will shy away from if they like mild cigars. Right. What would you recommend something like this? Uh, for a steak I mean, this lover? This is full flavor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that was, I mentioned that earlier. Right, it, you it, did, it, yeah. ab Absolutely. For a steak lover, uh, this this has got uh, enough spice in it that if you like any kind of spicy foods, yeah, like, like, spicy. Like, like Jamaican food or if you like yeah. uh, spicy hot wings or something like that, this is yeah. this is really a, a good cigar to, 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 to taste if that's your type of flavor profile when it comes to eating. Right. Um, but they tell me that like they like pasta primavera. I'm like, okay, fine. Go with your mild cigar, <laughs> right. you know. <laughs> I, I, I usually say like, well, what are you smoking now? You know, I, I want to know like what they're what they've already smoked. Yeah, but but you then know? but then you're just basically taking what what they're already used to and 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 not really expanding their horizons. Well, that's not necessarily true. Look, so what I'll do is they'll say, well, I, I like you know this particular cigar. And I'll say, okay, that that's a good cigar. I said, but, you know, why don't you try this? And I'll, and I'll say, well, you know, how about something a little different? But, but, you know? but if you, if it's you're, in the same flavor profile. But if, you, if you're taking, if you're taking mm -hmm. something, a, a cigar that they're smoking, and, mm -hmm. you're, and, and you're basically basing your, your decision on that one cigar, mm -hmm. then it's not really apples to apples. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I, I'm, I'm taking a little bit, I try to take a little step further by saying, what do you, let, let's find out what you really like to eat. I mean, it's like people ingest things. Really? I, well, I, I, that's interesting. I never really thought of that. I usually base it on, you know, stuff that whatever they're smoking compared to what, like, I like, mm -hmm. you know, because I can only go by what I've tasted Correct. and what I like. And I'll say, well, you know, if you like this cigar, you might also like this cigar. Now, it might be, it might be full flavor. It might be, you know. But they might be uh, smoking the wrong cigar to begin with. What's that? They might be smoking the wrong cigar. You know, I, I well, count, countless times I've actually pointed people in a direction that they wouldn't normally go based on just that one simple criteria. So you go against the grain. I go You're against, against the, grain. the grain. I'm, I'm definitely against the grain <laughs> type of guy. Yes. All right. Well, anyway, we are uh, just about. I'm just about at the end of this thing, but I'm I'm still loving I'm it. I'm going to keep smoking even after I'm done. And uh, we have been smoking the La Promesa by my father's cigars, Jose Pepin Garcia. This is the Petite, it's a four and a half by 50. And remember, you can buy all my father's cigars, including La Promesa, at famous-smoke.com. While you're on the site, sign up for the free catalog, a lot of good stuff in there. And make sure you follow Cigar Advisor on cigaradvisor.com, follow us on our Facebook page, like us there. And of course, you know we're also on Instagram, so follow us there. We're on YouTube, so make sure you sign up for our YouTube broadcasts, uh, stuff like this, our reviews of other cigars, and uh, our other videos are 
101s. We talk about you know, suggestions and little things like that we give people. And uh, make sure you click on the bell when you're on the YouTube page so you get our notifications and um, you'll get all the news about our upcoming videos. So um, I want to thank you, Umberto, for coming by today. Thank, I think we really learned me. a lot. I really do. I, it was really interesting. And thank you all for watching. And by the way, I want to know, I'm going to admit something right now. I got a confession to make. Oh, no. I got happy smokes from you. Oh, really? I stole it. Because <laughs> he used to sign all the end, you know, when you do the email, you'd always put happy smokes. There. I said, I like that. <laughs> so anyway, that's, I, had to, I had to confess that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Check out our next hashtag now smoking video, and we'll see you later. Happy smokes.